Hello, welcome to Flourish Focus, a series featuring one-on-one -on -one exchanges with fintech innovators around the world. I'm Ifayomi Carr, a principal at Flourish Ventures. As a global fintech investor, our focus on identifying technology innovations that at their core help directly or indirectly advance financial health and economic resilience for people and small businesses. We've been investing in Africa for the better part of a decade across a range of, of, of sectors, from payments to credit, to ag. Today, I'm thrilled to talk with one of our Africa portfolio partners, Apollo Agriculture, a technology company based in Nairobi, Kenya, that helps small scale farmers maximize profits by offering them a series of, of goods, inputs, advice, insurance, and credit. Joining me for this discussion are Apollo CEO, Eli Pollock, and Chief, Chief Customer Officer, Benjamin Njenga. Eli, I've known you for, you know, better part of 25 years. And so I'll start the question just by asking you, how did you get into farming and how did you get the idea of starting Apollo? Thanks, Afayomi. It's a, a pleasure to be here um, with, with you and Ben. Before Apollo, I was lucky to join as an early employee of a company called the Climate Corporation. Um, and I joined that company because its mission was to help the world's people and businesses manage and adapt to climate change. That company um, really focused in on agriculture and focused in on thinking about how do we help farmers make optimal decisions across the course of the growing season. So things like the optimum seed or the optimum fertilizer, all customized down to a field or a subfield level based on all the data that we could access. It was an amazing journey at that company. Um, we grew to 60 plus million acres of usage across the U.S. Um, and the company was acquired in, in 2013. I think... While I was there, I really caught the agri-tech bug, um, but I was there and I think, you know, I had this sense that, okay, here we are in the U.S., you know, we've got 10, 15 PhDs and the big goal um, is how do we help a U.S. farmer increase their production by, you know, three or four or five percent. And obviously farming is a tight margin business wherever you are. And so that matters. But I would look at other markets, opportunities like in Africa and say, okay, wow, you know, farmers are planting dramatically more acreage, but producing far less you know, that just seems like a fundamentally more exciting opportunity, sort of opportunity where you might be able to build a business that rather than helping a customer gain two, three, four percent, um, might help a customer double, triple or quadruple their, their production. So that just sort of captivated my imagination. And, and I was lucky um, as I started exploring Apollo to, to team up with Ben, who, who we'll hear from shortly, and with Earl, our CTO, who, who was a former colleague also at the Climate Corporation. Amazing. Amazing. Ben, maybe tell me how, how you got into farming as well in your story and, and how you came into the Apollo team. Thank you, Fayomi, and uh, thanks for having me here today to share my story. So I grew up on a farm. My mother is a small scale farmer. And uh, as I was growing up, I would be able to see the kind of challenges that my mother went through. Uh, I remember when we were growing up, my mom used to have us only five bucks per acre. And I knew that if at all she had everything that she needed for her to succeed, she could have been able to double her production. That is all the way from high quality seeds, uh, in fertilizer, the training, the insurance that she, uh, she need for her to be able to succeed. But the challenge was real accessibility for financing to be able to access those goods at planting. And that was a real challenge. And uh, that really prevented my mom from uh, doubling her production so that she can be able to even uh, pay for her school fees work. So I started having a strong passion for agriculture since I was a small boy. And uh, I was lucky to get uh, a university college where I was able to uh, pursue an agricultural course just with a passion to come and develop solutions to, to solve the problems that I saw my mother going through. And uh, these challenges, not only for my mom, is uh, really across all farmers, not only in Kenya, but also in Africa. All farmers, smallholder farmers still struggle in terms of increasing their production because they can't be able to access the tools they need to be able to succeed. So before Apollo, I used to work for a company called Lake Africa, where we were developing agricultural insurance for smallholder farmers. 
And that really helped me to have a sense of uh, other kind of challenges that the farmer were, were going through. And uh, when I was visiting farmers in the field, they would tell me, oh, oh Ben, we need to, to, to get access to, to financing so that we can be able to afford the, the products, but we can't be able to do that. But I, I was just asking myself, how will we score these farmers for us to be able to understand who pay or not pay? Them? And that is how I got to meet Eli and Al through a friend and uh, was very much uh, interested with their background around technology and how we can use alternative data sets and uh, machine learning and remote sensing to build credit profiles of these smallholder farmers that will be able to enable us call these farmers and be able to know who will be able to pay a loan or not. And this is how it came together. And we started de developing customized packages that has everything for these farmers to be able to succeed. And that is how we, uh, I got to be part of the Apollo team. Thanks, Ben. Your, your journey is, is very personal, having had experience in farming from a young age. Um, maybe tell me, Ben, what do you think is the opportunity in African agriculture more broadly? I think the opportunity is huge. And uh, as I said, is that uh, what farmers in uh, Africa are producing is way much less than what uh, other farmers like in other developed countries, like in the US are already producing. And uh, they, we know the solutions. Uh, we know these farmers need all everything. That, uh, they need the light tools so that they can be able to succeed. And when we were even uh, starting Apollo, I used to teach Eli and Al and tell them for Africa, it's not that complicated. Farmers don't need the best seed, they just need the quality seed. They don't need uh, the, the, the best fertilizer, they just need enough fertilizer for them to be able to farm. And uh, with these known solutions and these tools that the farmers need to succeed, with that support, you will be able to see dramatic improvement in terms of the production, almost two, three X in terms of production in a season, if that farmer is able to access these tools. And I think sometimes when you talk about smallholder farmers, people might see these are poor farmers, but I wish I say they are very rich in land and with the right support for them to be able to farm, uh, to, to, to access the, the right tools that they need to succeed, they're able to farm profitably in their farms. And I think that is the potential that we have. And uh, as you look at the African co context is that uh, most smallholder, most farmers are smallholder farmers. And these farmers have the land and they just need the support for them to be able to succeed. And that is a potential market that is uh, available out there that we, 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 we at Apollo, we are, we, we are, we are, we are aiming for. That makes sense. Um... You know, Eli, you were, you were describing how you were a bit jaded by your experience in Silicon Valley and, and also came to sort of tackle what you saw as a great opportunity. Um, maybe tell me, what is the overall vision for Apollo? And, and what exactly do you guys do? How are you, how are you reaching that and how are you empowering some of these farmers? Fantastic. Thanks, Afiomi. I mean, fundamentally, our, our business is helping farmers make more money. Um, and, and, and that's really where we, we see the opportunity. I don't know so much if I'd say if I was jaded by, by, by the work in the U.S. so much as I was excited um, by the opportunities to, to build a business that was not only potentially massively commercially successful, but also had a, a, a large positive impact on, 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 on people's lives. And so, I mean, if you think about farming in Africa, Africa is about 21 percent of, of the world's farmland, but farmers are producing dramatically less. Than, than farmers in other areas and have access to far less. I mean, Ben really already talked us through this in a, in a, in a, in a really thoughtful way. But you know, when you think about the tools that a US farmer has at their disposal, I mean, fantastic inputs, high quality financing, you know, access to highly subsidized government insurance, just a whole range of tools that enable them to drive the production and profitability that you see today. And if you think about most small scale farmers, they, they lack almost all of those things, whether that's financing, quality inputs, access to optimized advice or access to high quality markets. And so at Apollo, our mission is to change that. So we, we help farmers make more money. And the way we do that is we help them access the products, the services and the financing that they need to invest in their farm. I think on a practical level for each crop, we design an optimized bundle where that bundle includes everything the farmer needs to succeed. So things like seed and fertilizer, 
advice that guides the farmer across the course of the season, insurance that protects them in a bad year. And then most critically, we bundle that all together as a loan that lets the farmer access those products up front at the beginning of the season, but only pay when they've realized the return come harvest. And so what we found is that this unlocks a massive increase in production. The average Apollo customer produces about 2.6 times what the average Kenyan farmer produces on their maize farm. And so we think that this is an opportunity to help farmers grow their profitability across the continent and really share in that value. It's, it's pretty amazing the different elements you guys have tied together um, to offer this sort of cohesive bundle to, to farmers. Maybe, maybe Eli, talk me through that process of, of putting these step-by-step -step together um, to, to fulfill this full package that you offer now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when we're talking about the business, you get this sense that, wow, we, we really do a lot. You know, it feels like in some ways we're, we're building a few different businesses to, to achieve our goals. And so I think fundamentally, it starts with a relentless focus on delivering value for customers. And so actually when we started, we didn't get started saying, hey, let's build a business that is so vertically integrated. You know, we, are, we acquire the customers, we underwrite the loans, we help make sure the products get there at quality, we provide advice and collect the loans. We actually said, you know, how do we build a little piece of technology that perhaps we can sell to others and unlock access to financing or unlock inputs to farmers? But I think, and, and this is something that, that Ben can really speak to powerfully, I think what we saw as we got deeper into the market, that that, 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 that just fundamentally wasn't going to solve the problems that farmers were facing and deliver their value. And so I think as we chased this lead, which is what do farmers need and how do we deliver value to them in pursuit of our mission? I think what we found is that we, we needed to do more. Um, you know, we needed to help provide the financing to farmers ourselves versus hoping that, that banks might show up if we built a good credit model. You know, we needed to ensure that quality inputs got there out to the farm. Um, or else perhaps that loan that we provided might be spent on a lower quality input and farmers wouldn't see that return on investment. Um, and so, you know, it isn't like we woke up one day and said, let's build something massively complicated. I think we woke up and we said, let's build something that delivers the value that farmers need. And it turns out that that requires doing a lot. And so I, I like to joke that, you know, we may not be the platonic ideal of scalability and capital efficiency, but I think that we're right at that sort of appropriate frontier of, the most capital efficient and scalable business that can actually work in terms of delivering the value we envision to our customers. Ben, anything that you'd add there? Yeah, I think you got it well, Eli. And I think uh, for, for you to succeed with farmers and the smallholder farmers, they are really looking for more because you they need financing, but they need it at the right time. Uh, the time when the rains come, they have to get on the farm. So really controlling those pieces that enables you to be able to deliver the promise to the farmer has really helped us to build the trust and the relationship that uh, we, have, uh, we, we, have, we have right now on the ground in terms of our brand. And that relationship and the trust will also be able to help us transition these farmers from more subsistence farming to commercial farming where they start now uh, farming more profitable crops where we are able to help them with inputs, we are able to help them with uh, financing and also training for them to be able to succeed. Ben, ben, you mentioned a really important word there, which is trust. And I think you both have alluded to how important it was to gain the trust of customers. Um, but as, as you know, I mean, farming, it, most of these folks have obviously been farming um, for years, for generations, and, and might be stuck in their ways. Then maybe talk a bit about how you were able to gain that trust and really entrench you yourselves in some of these communities. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think it all started the way we, we were able to build uh, one, uh, the product that delivers value to the farmer. Because one thing that we make sure whenever we are, pro we are developing these products is to make sure the farmer is benefiting. So we check on the gross margin of the product and ensure that once the farmer is supported with a set of inputs and the training and the insurance and the financing, the farmer ultimately will be able to make money out of it. And that is also one of the fu fundamental blocks that enables you to be able to connect with their customer because they are seeing value in you. But in, in addition to that is really the processes that Eli was, was explaining, all the way from how we source these customers, 
how we, we, we arrange the, the last mile distribution, ensuring that these customers are able to get high quality inputs and at the right time when they need those inputs. And uh, the, same, the same thing also on the financing so that they can be able to afford these, uh, these inputs at planting and be able to pay slowly over the season until harvesting when they can be able to sell their produce and be able to get a return that also help them to be able to pay back the loan. That also part of trying to build a, a repayment structure that really resonates with the economic lives of these smallholder farmers. Also, really make sure that the farmers is able to see like, this is my partner in my family. They understand my problem. They understand my economic challenges. So those are the, the, the small things, but very important things that uh, uh, they are embedded in our process and our products that help us to build that trust. And also the financing, what we have seen in the past, or either what I've seen in the past with more traditional banks is that sometimes that process is not fully controlled. So you find like the loan will be processed when it's very late for the farmer to plant, and that even poses more risk to the farmer. So also integrating the financing component where we have full control and enabling that we are able to finance that farmer at the right time also really brings that kind of promise in terms of like, we are promising you, we will give you a set of inputs that will be able to help you to succeed in the season. And we are able to do that at the quality the farmer expect and also at the timeline that the farmer expect. Maybe just two yeah. quick thoughts on that. If that's all right. I mean, the first is, I think, you know, as we started the company, you know, we really had a decision to make, which is which kind of crops do we start in? And really inspired by Ben's judgment on this, we said, let's start in crops that enable us to deliver value to farmers up front in crops that they're already growing. So, you know, we dream of a world where we're able to help farmers shift into higher profitability more sustainable or more drought resilient crops. But ultimately we said, look, we're building a technology product for a customer base that's largely analog. And so we need to start in a crop that enables us to deliver value up front, earn that trust, and then over time begin to have conversations with customers. I, I think the second piece is that, that there is an element of patience here. I mean, I think people often look at farmers and they think, why are farmers slow to adopt new technology? And they sort of treat that as though, you know, perhaps the the null hypothesis is that farmers should be uh, you know, adopting technology much more quickly. But if you think about it, you know, imagine you're farming for 50 years um, and maybe you have two seasons a year, one to two. That means that you're having between one and two paychecks per year over 50 years. So that's 50 to 100 paychecks in your entire lifetime. And so when you think about, you know, many of us get paid monthly, for example. I mean, how thoughtful would you be about something that risked one fiftieth or one one hundredth of your lifetime earnings, you'd probably be a bit more risk conscious. And so I do think that there's an element of patience and recognition that, you know, just because someone's not rushing into adopting something entirely new doesn't mean that they might not have quite a thoughtful um, rationale, whether, you know, kind of explicit or, or, or implicit for, 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 for why they're approaching that problem and thinking about risk in that way. It's a, it's a really good point. And, and Eli, before we move forward, maybe just break down what the bundle is that you offer farmers and how that repayment schedule actually works, just so some of our viewers might have an idea of, of what this looks like from the farmer's perspective. Absolutely. So for a given crop, we design an optimized bundle that includes the core things that we think farmers need to dramatically increase their production. So if you think about something like a maize bundle, that'll include a hybrid seed of the farmer's choice, that include planting and top dress fertilizer, and then it'll include additional add-on products that the farmer might choose, for example, crop protection products or things like that. Additionally, it'll include optimized advice that helps the farmer manage their farm over the course of the season. And that could be anything from something about land preparation or planting to advice on how to manage an emergent pest outbreak in their area um, and what to do about it. The, the third component of the bundle is an area yield insurance product that protects the farmer and makes sure that even if they face a drought or, you know, there was a lot of discussion about locusts, um, you know, at, at some point relatively recently, that, that they'll be protected in terms of making that bigger investment. And we think it's absolutely essential both to our risk management, but also normatively to support customers as they increase their investment to also have appropriate risk management tied to that. And then above all, to, to your point, Fiomi, we bring that together with a loan. And so this isn't a cash loan. The farmer actually walks into a local retailer, a retailer in their village with a voucher code 
if they're approved for the loan. And they provide that voucher code to one of more than 400 retailers across Kenya. And they just get their inputs. So they get the seed, the fertilizer, or any other add-ons they've selected. And then in the background, we handle the payment processing with that retailer. Now, what that allows us to do is to ensure that the farmer gets exactly the inputs they need at a high quality and that our money goes towards the investment that we're co-financing with that farmer um, without being involved in that last mile distribution, storage, and fulfillment ourselves, since that's really not fundamentally what we're best at. To your question about repayment schedule, I mean, we are really, really focused on making sure that the repayment cycle of the loan is tied to the actual planting and harvest cycle of the farmer. And so that matters both at planting, where as Ben said, it's you got to get your farming inputs before you can plant. And so, you know, when the rain comes, you know, in the long rain season, for example, we make a really strong commitment to make sure that we're there, that we can process applications quickly and make sure that we're not going to be a delay in terms of farmers getting into the ground. Similarly, though, at the end of the season, if, if somehow that loan deadline comes before the farmer is actually harvested, that's a huge problem for the farmer, but also a huge problem for Apollo, since our loan is predicated on the assumption that they're going to be able to dramatically increase that profitability and use that increased cash flow to pay back. And so we've actually developed a lot of new technology. For example, we're able to track the progression of the crop over the course of the season using satellite data and then make automated adjustments to the actual loan tenor to make sure that the cash flow cycle, so when we ask the farmer to repay, is actually tied to when that farmer is going to have harvested and had time to sell. And so that's just a high level view on it. Um, but those are the fundamental elements of the package and how we think about it from the perspective of the customer. If we have time later in the call, I'd, I'd love to talk about you know, how we also do that in a way that's scalable and profitable, acknowledging that our average customer is you know, farming only a, a small amount of acreage um, and, and, and may not necessarily have a feature phone or some of these other things that make it easier to, to, to digitally serve customers. Yeah, yeah we, we, should we should definitely, definitely get to the product, product a bit later, later if we have time. time. And, 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 and before, before we get there, I mean, and maybe, maybe Ben, ben this, this one's for you. you. I, would I would love to talk, talk, talk about, about the infrastructure that you guys, guys have built. Clearly, you're, you're offering a variety, a variety of products, products and, there's and there's a network, network of, of agent, agents, and dealers, and data scientists who are enabling this to be possible. possible. So maybe, so maybe talk, talk about this, this broader, broader network, network that, that Apollo, Apollo has created, created and how, and how it's, it's kind of dispersed across the country. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I think this is an area where Apollo have really innovated and invested a lot. And uh, the part where we automate the whole customer acquisition journey all the way from the time when the farmer sign up or apply for the loan until when we are able to do the last mile distribution as Eli was explaining. So the way we have done from all the way from marketing, we have been able to develop technology that also even track the source of where the customer is. So once we develop the package, we'll go out there in the market and then we'll be able to advertise or either market the product through different marketing channels like radio, uh, roadshows, uh, farmer referrals. And every farmer sign up has a unique one. And that really help us to be able to track the source of those uh, of those uh, sign up from the customers and really that what it enables us to do is really to be able to track the conversion of those customers and different marketing channels and those the the loan processing or either the the funnel but also in addition to that it also helps us to be able to make uh, the right decision in terms of how we allocate marketing resources into different marketing channels. So once we acquire the customers, we have been able to really think through in terms of like, we need to visit the farmers because we tie the loan into the actual size of the farmer's farm. And uh, for us to be able to do that, we need to go to the field and be able to mark the boundaries of the farm so that one, we can be able to know what is the size of the land, but also correct other KYC information from the farmer, like the photo of the farmer, the photo of the national ID. And uh, what we have done is really to innovate around how do we avoid having these fixed costs around like field officers who you are paying on a monthly basis, but you can't be able to account for the for the work they are doing so we thought like how can how can we be able to borrow some of the more successful models like from uber taxify and we have been able to build uh, a technology uh, an app for our field agents and these field agents are more young people who knows how to use a smartphone and then they have an app we know where the farmer is located we know where the agent is located so we are able to 
uh, match the farmer with the most optimal agent, and then the agent will visit the farmer, and then we'll pay the agent once we have done verification on the data and uh, confirmed everything is accurate, and we are able to pay the agent on a task by task basis. And that really helps us to be able to keep our cost of operations low, but also pay at variable components, or either once the work has been done. So once the farmer uh, is visited by an agent, it goes to an automated credit model. This is another innovation that we have been able to do in terms of developing a credit model that helps us to build credit profiles for these customers so that we can make the right lending decision. Uh, previously, it would take more than one day or even a week to approve a loan with traditional banks. But uh, at Apollo, we are able to do this decision quickly because we can be able to automate the lending decision without human involvement, using the data we collect from the customers, but also data we collect on the ground from uh, machine learning, uh, remote sensing, and that help us to give us rich data to make a credit decision. So once the farmer is approved by the credit model, the farmer is allocated to the nearest agro dealer shops. These are shops that sell inputs to the farmers in the village. So what we have done also, we have been able to build up a network of agro dealer partners uh, and be able to build a technology, uh, a checkout app that we are able to link all these partners within uh, with the technology and enabling us to do the last mile distribution. So once the farmer is approved, they will get a voucher and then they will be assigned to their nearest agrovet where they will now be able to walk in with the voucher and be able to get the inputs as uh, Eli mentioned. So if you look at that process, it's fully automation in terms of uh, the operations involved. And uh, as Eli mentioned, our farmers mostly use featured forms. But what we usually do is that we make the technology very simple on the farmer side. So either they're interacting on an SMS or a USSD, but more sophisticated on the back end to be able to keep our cost low, but also be able to build processes and systems that can be able to, uh, to scale. And while we are using humans, we are really developing systems around them to make them more effective and more efficient uh, to keep uh, to keep our cost low. So that is how the process work currently. Eli, I'm not sure if at all you have anything you you like to add on that. It sounds great. I think Rafael has got more questions for us, and so that, that was fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Well, uh, listen, Ben, that, that's great, and, and you're both describing a very rosy picture. Um, but as you know, I, I'm actually in Eldoret, and I went to visit. Um, several of the farmers today, and and it's not always rosy. Um, you know, it's not like a, a general fintech company where you just have to worry about the product and 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 the data. Uh, in farming, you have to worry about the weather or <laughs> if it's going to rain in one season or not. Uh, guys, tell me about the challenges you faced as you built this company out, and and then I'll, I'll direct this to both of you because I'm sure it's in different elements. But maybe Eli, starting with you about. Uh, you know, some of the pitfalls you guys have faced along the way and some of the challenges you guys felt from the early days to now. Fantastic. Thanks, Afemi. So I think, I mean, foundationally, one of the basic theses of what we do at Apollo is that we have a good understanding of what farmers need to dramatically increase their production, and it's a question of getting it to them. And I think that fundamentally asks the question of, okay, well, so if we know what farmers need to make more money, why don't they have those things? And so, you know, you spent some time um, with some of our customers, but I think when you think about the, 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 the medium small scale farmers, our average customer is about 50 years old, about half men, half women, using a feature phone, could live you know, 5, 10, 15 kilometers from the nearest tarmac road. You know, that's a customer base that's just expensive to acquire and expensive to service a relationship with when you're using sort of classic people and paper type processes. You know, it's just expensive to go build a relationship with somebody who lives in a rural area you know, 10, 20 kilometers from the nearest center. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, you know, our customers' farms are small, and that means that the average amount of product and therefore revenue that we can earn from a customer um, is, is, is also commensurately small. And so I think that historically, the reason, the biggest challenge has been that on one side, it's been expensive to acquire and service customers. And on the flip side, the amount of money that you've been able to earn from each of those customers has been relatively small. And so as a result, 
even though we have a strong understanding of the fundamental tools that farmers need to dramatically increase their production, the market hasn't really been able to, to address that. And that's really where we focus the vast majority of our attention from a technology perspective. I mean, I think Ben walked through this really thoughtfully, but from our perspective, it's really about how do we drive down the cost of serving customers to a level where we can meet that one acre farmer and see a real commercial opportunity. Um, you know, similarly, how do we meet that one acre farmer who not only doesn't have, you know, multiple years of audited financial accounts, but might not even have yield records from previous seasons and say, how do we get a sense for what the risk is for that farmer? And so I think, you know, in doing that, you know, we've been able actually in the, in the past years to demonstrate that you can fundamentally build a profitable relationship with a small scale farmer. Um, but, but you can't do that just by rocking up, um, you know, with a, a loan officer and a couple pieces of paper and, and taking that information. You really need to invest in a process that, that strikes that appropriate balance between automating everything we can, but also respecting that customers may not love technology. Um, in fact, they might be more technophobic in certain cases. And so really trying to figure out how do we strike an appropriate balance between using technology where we can to drive efficiency while also meeting our customers' needs and fundamentally respecting um, their desires and needs as, as our customers. You know, I think that all comes together you know, to, to, to frame up the big challenge, which is you know, how do you build relationships with you know, now we've reached more than 100,000 paying farmers um, and, and, and hope to continue growing that rapidly. How do you do that in a way that, that not only delivers massive value to them, which we, we certainly hope we do, but also is, 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 is scalable and profitable enough for us to grow as a business? Ben, maybe, maybe same question for you and, and talk about some of the challenges you faced um, and specifically maybe how COVID has affected the business as, as the last sort of 15 months has rocked a lot of us. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we, I, I, what I can say is that COVID has been having different uh, impacts to different organizations, Apollo included. Uh, and I think what I can say is that uh, once COVID uh, hit in Kenya, we were having a call center, uh, a call center of around 150 people, but uh, we were able at least to move quickly in terms of moving that call center team to remote within almost two weeks. And that demonstrates the power of technology that we have been able to build. And that enabled us to be able to continue serving our customers because that was in March when we were on top or either on the high season or the peak season, uh, and uh, it was amazing the way the, the team was able to really move faster and ensure that customers uh, really continue getting the product from us. That said, uh, during COVID is when also our farmers need us most, and uh, really getting food is uh, very important, and uh, we had a very strong dedication in terms of like, we need to continue uh, supporting these farmers even during COVID. And I can say that sometimes, somehow, the way we have been able to structure our company, it was also a bit advantageous with COVID because the platform that we have been able to build doesn't really require the kind of group setup. For example, uh, most traditional uh, agricultural companies, the way they used to deliver training to, to farmers on the ground is through the type of farmer groups training. So you get a field officer, go out there, be able to bring together like 20, 30 farmers in a group and be able to deliver a training. So during the COVID time, it was completely not possible to be able to do the training uh, for, for using that kind of uh, that kind of model. But uh, the way we deliver our training is through remote channels uh, where we package an audio training that we deliver to farmers, uh, even on their featured forms via call in a way that they are able to get the training uh, and be able to adopt the tra uh, to adopt the, the practices that we are able to, to teach them. So during COVID, we were actually able to continue training our farmers. I remember two weeks after that, we were doing a training for our farmers on uh, fall annual, which is a pest which has been uh, a bother to, to, to our farmers because of the, 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 the armyworms that have been uh, affecting the maize crop. So being able to continue training farmers, even with COVID, was a big win for us. And, uh, and also the same thing, uh, during the same time, we were also able to continue 
checking out farmers at the shop and still getting products because we are using the platform that we have been able to develop. So using that platform have really enabled us to manage the impact on COVID, though there were other kind of supplier disruption challenges uh, uh, like pushing uh, inputs to the rural areas, but at least we were able to manage that closely with the with the national and the county governments. They were very supportive. But I will say that uh, the infrastructure and the technology that we have built at least have been, have been able to place us uh, very strategically to continue serving these rural farmers as we adhere to the COVID protocols that have been put in by the Ministry of Health. Absolutely, I, and, and having tracked you guys um, since then, it was really impressive the way that you were very resilient and, and, and were able to make moves quite quickly to adopt um, to the changes happening across the country. Um, guys, I, I thank you so much for your time. I, I, we're almost out of here. I want to have one more question, just a, a very quick response from each of you, but maybe Ben, I'll start with you. And it's just about what are the next steps and priorities for you guys and how do you see yourself shaping the industry? So maybe Ben, just a quick response from you on, on priorities for Apollo going forward. Yeah, so ideally one of the key priorities, as uh, Eli mentioned, is that we really want to make sure farmers continue making more money. And how we want to do that is really by uh, transitioning our farmers to be able to farm more commercial and more profitable crops. We feel like uh, at the stage where we are with Apollo, is that with our farmers, is that we have been able to build the relationship and the trust. And uh, using that trust and relationship, we will be able to transition farmers, not only to grow maize, but also to be able to grow other crops where these farmers can be able to, to make money. And that is a, a journey which we have already started and is very exciting to continue seeing how that will be able to evolve. We know it's not a simple challenge, but it's a challenge which we feel we have the fundamentals and we have the relationship and the trust from our customers that will make it uh, eventually possible. Thanks, Ben. And Eli, same to you. Thanks, Naomi. So, I mean, I think what gets us excited is in thinking about how do you build a pathway from farming for subsistence to farming as a business and a pathway to farm your way into the middle class. And so when I think about our vision for Apollo, I think about, you know, scaling in two ways. The first is I think about what I do think about is scaling horizontally. So that's how do we serve more farmers on more acres, both across Kenya and then into markets beyond Kenya. And that's really all about meeting customers where they are and delivering value to the largest number of farmers and acres as possible. But what also gets us fired up is thinking about how do we double down on our, our, our most excited customers, you know, these agri-entrepreneurs who say, I'm here to build an agribusiness. You know, I may be farming a couple of acres today with two cows and 10 chickens, but give me the opportunity and, I, and I'll be building a, a real agribusiness here. Um, and so I think there's an opportunity not just to scale horizontally, but to scale vertically and to deliver more value to those agri-entrepreneurs across Kenya and ultimately across Africa that help them grow their farming business and, and, and share in that value. And so I think that, you know, I, I'm so proud to, to get to work with Ben and, and, and the rest of the Apollo team um, and, and so excited to see what we can build all aligned behind that fundamental vision that Ben shared of saying, how do we help farmers make more money, whether that's doubling their production in a you know a stable cereals crop or transitioning toward a more diversified portfolio of higher profitability crops, thinking about export markets and, 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 and the like. And so I think lot, lot, lots to be excited about. Absolutely. And, and guys, thank you so much. I'm, I'm proud to be able to work with you guys and to, to be a part of this Apollo journey. Um, if you had told me 20 years ago, we'd be having a conversation about the ad company in Kenya you built. I would have told you you're crazy, but but here we are, and I couldn't be more grateful. Um, but but thank you both, Ben, Eli. It's been incredible to have this conversation. I certainly learned a lot about Apollo um, and about some of the things you're working on and some of the things you're still going to create. Um, also, a massive thank you to our viewers for joining. Uh, it's great to have you on board. Uh, I think any questions that you guys have for us, please please send over to events at flourishventures.com. Um, so we can continue this conversation and continue to work with inspiring entrepreneurs. Um, but thank you all for joining. Um, I hope you tune in for the next Flourish Focus.